Nat, how's your pre-season been, mate? Um, only two days in, uh, done a couple of sessions, so um, yeah, had a good active rest over the last couple of weeks and um, yeah, ready to get into this first block of pre-season. What did you do in your time off? Um, well, I'm from the country, so I went home for most of it and spent some time there and um, got away to Broome with my girlfriend for a couple of days and um, yeah, just enjoyed some time away from the club. Did you have to have any off-season surgery or operations or anything like no, that? No, this is the first one that I've actually had no, no surgeries. Um, obviously I had the shoulder last year, so I had a, a fairly... Um, solid program to continue with, just to continue strengthening my groin and um, and my shoulder th throughout the break. So, but yeah, no surgery. So, it's and good. what's what's your pre-season goals going to be? Like, are you looking to <coughs> add weight, lose weight? Um, maybe add a little tiny bit, but I'm pretty comfortable with the weight I'm at now, and and just yeah, be fit and available. Sort of come January and February when we sort of crank up into the business end of, of the pre-season. I know it's really early, but does um, anyone? You've noticed come back and really surprised you with how much energy they've come back with, or how big they are. Or yeah, uh, there's no real surprises. Um, the, the blokes all know what's required of them, and guys like Anthony Morabito and um, always set a standard when it comes to pre-season. Obviously, he has he's had the two knees now, and he's in look, looking and cracking Nick, and um, pretty excited to see what he can do. How are you doing, buddy? Come on, yeah, right. He's sent to do a lot of running this morning, Morabito. Mm. As well. How encouraging is that for you? Yeah, it's good. It's really encouraging for us and for them as well. I think mora has been running pretty solid for a couple of weeks now. Um, obviously, he's been through one knee, so he knows what's expected. And, and talking with him, he's really confident with how things are going. And um, yeah, there'll be no rushing him at all. And yeah, he's just really excited to continue the preseason and, and look forward to the start of next year. A couple of good ins next season when they do come in. Is that I guess going to have a lot to your midfield depth? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we finished pretty strong in the midfield last year and. Uh, with those players and the acquisition of Brett Kirk as a bit of a mentor as well, um, we're, we're going to go from strength to strength, hopefully. How are you finding Brett Kirk at the moment? Yeah, well, I've, like yeah, I only met him yesterday. Um, he's really enthusiastic and he did the run with us this morning, so he's still in pretty good pretty good form himself. So, um, no, nah, he's really keen and he's got a lot of knowledge and wisdom and he's been there and done it all, so um, he's a great resource to leech off. Have you heard um, the stories about him and you know, the yoga and the meditating and all that. Is that true? Is it, is yeah, I think he's written a book. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I had a bit of a read of that. And um, Yeah, he's he's a quite an intense guy, a really competitive guy, and um, but just really well-rounded and balanced and understands what's required and, um, as I said, a great resource. Are you open to those kinds of training methods? Have you thought about it? Oh, I'm always open to learning new ways of doing things, and obviously it's worked for him, so... Um, there's got to be benefit in it somewhere, so yeah, no doubt I'll learn a bit off him over the next couple of weeks. There's going to be some tough decisions to be made for free. They've probably already been made with, with some guys to be let go. With Jack Anthony, do you, do you think he still has a future in footy? Oh, absolutely. He's kicked 50 goals for in a season, so he's a fantastic um, player and he's still got a lot to offer. And, um, I'm sure that he's, he's had a big off-season and, and he'll have a big pre-season. What Dylan Robertson is going through with his homesickness. Can you understand that coming from the country a little bit? Yeah, yeah what going I, I think there's a little bit of a misunderstanding there. He's he sort of got family reasons he needed to go home for, and I don't think there was any homesickness involved. But um, he's required player back, uh, sorry, required person back at home, and um, he's obviously decided to take that pathway. And as a friend, I yeah support him fully. And what about the 2012 season? You missed so much footy, I think, three months, but the, the times that you did play, you showed some really encouraging form, so you must be heartened by that good form straight forward to next year. Yeah, they're really looking forward to next year, and um, the main goal is to try and get through the full season without breaking down, so yeah, hopefully if I can have a big pre-season and get my body in the best possible condition, um, it'll set myself up. Guys that do get cut, Matt, there's obviously an opportunity for them to come back through the rookie list. What would you say to them what is about their, their future prospects? Oh, it's evident every year that guys that get cut um, do inevitably inevitably come back quite often, um, and and the guys know that it's not the end of the road. Um, so yeah, I just um, I can't really give any advice because I've never been in the position myself, but uh, they would know what's required. You feel like you've got a good example at the club, I suppose, in Clancy Pierce. Yeah, well, he's a perfect example, isn't he? Perfect uh, model for any other people aspiring to to come back from the brink of being. Um, done and yeah, now he's come back and had a really solid year and he'll build on that this year.